Hello everybody and welcome to our July session of home groups. I hope that you all have come in excited and um, just looking forward to spending time uh, with your home groups today. We're over halfway through the season, the home group season, and uh, pretty soon we'll be into those cooler temperatures. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm looking forward to that quite personally. But uh, I wanted to come to you today and uh, discuss with you the sermon that I preached this morning. Uh, now, this sermon's message was found in Matthew chapter 11, and I wanted to pull out uh, specific scripture again and go over that and, and, and really dig into that particular scripture. But before I do that, let me tell you a little story. Uh, some of you that have been to our home in the past couple of years, uh, you know that we have two cats and uh, both of them can be quite a handful at times. You know, cats kind of have a mind of their own. Uh, they want what they want when they want it, and um, they don't really care who knows it. <laughs> They're gonna do what they need to do, get what they want. Well, we have our older cat, his name is Max, and um, he loves wet cat food, you know, the stuff that comes out of the can. And um, ever so often, if we're not feeding him fast enough, he will literally come and get in our face. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have seen him in an attempt to get uh, Jennifer's attention. He will actually come over and headbutt her and then kind of lay down, plop down behind her on the couch or something like, hello, I'm still here. Where's my food? Uh, he's a bit of a trip. We love him, but you know, they can be a handful at times. But uh, recently, I happened to be at the house uh, by myself one day, and uh, I had decided I was going to take a nap. I had a few extra minutes, and I was going to do so. Jesus took naps, so it was okay for me to take naps too. So I got in my recliner. I cut the ceiling fan on. The air conditioning had already been set. Got me a blanket, cuddled up on my recliner to take a nice little nap. Well, I had almost drifted off, and then Max decided that he was ready to be fed. And I thought, mm, no, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. I'm starting to fall into that groggy sleep state and I'm not getting up just to feed you a can of food. You can wait, I'll feed you later. This is what I'm thinking. He climbed up and he kind of got into my face and he was probably, I don't know, maybe eight, nine inches from my face. And he just kind of sat down on my stomach. Well, normally I would have shoved him off, but I thought this time, well, I'll just kind of move around a little bit and he'll get off, uh, which is his norm. You know, once he thinks you're getting up, he takes off. So uh, he sat down right there. I mean, just like I said, about nine inches from my face, and it was quite hilarious. So I kind of uh, moved myself and jiggled myself a little bit and kind of took my hands under the blanket, and I kind of popped and tried to get him off. He was not to be deterred, so I thought, okay, well, you can sit there a few minutes. Well, a few minutes turned into about an hour and a half. I fell off to sleep and I forgot that he was there. Now, admittedly, when he first laid down on my stomach, I thought, okay, Joker, you don't need to eat because you're getting kind of heavy. Um, well, as I was laying, or not laying there, but as I was sitting in my recliner sleeping um, and I woke up at one point, I had went to move because my back was hurting me a little bit and he had jumped off of my stomach area and I was completely oblivious to what was going on. I, I forgot he was there. Um, he had laid his little chunky self on me and he had laid on me for so long that his weight had become something that I had become accustomed to. And um, I was struck with a thought in that moment. How many times do we catch ourselves walking through life carrying things and we just get accustomed to carrying those things. And whereas they used to seem like a burden, they used to seem um, heavy, it doesn't seem like a burden after we carry it for a while. And that's not a good thing because sometimes we end up just accumulating all of these things. If you were at church this morning, uh, you'll remember the example that I gave about uh, Caleb one of our guys who was walking around through the sanctuary with the luggage. And, um, you know, we shove so much stuff. We carry so much baggage in our life. And uh, it's quite crazy, some of the things that we do. And um, I was struck by this scripture and by the experience that I had with our cat, Max. 
And the scripture that really stuck out to me was from our sermon this morning from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and it's there you'll find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that scripture. It's nice to think about. It's nice to focus on. It's nice to know that we can turn to God when we're in a time of need and we're feeling heavy. But a lot of times we don't. How crazy is that? We have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who could help us through a situation, but we don't tap into that access. We decide to try and fix everything on our own. And, and many times we end up messing it up worse. We make it worse. And it's kind of our fault. But let's just take a moment and break down that scripture. Matthew 11, starting in verse 28, it says, come to me. Stop right there. Man, that right there is just a sermon on its own. Come to me. Jesus is telling these new believers, come to me. Don't turn to anybody else. Don't turn to the religious leaders. Don't turn to your family, your best friend, the person you complain to the most. He says, come to me. Come directly to me. I'm the source. Come to me, all you who are weary, all of you that are tired, that are burdened down, that are just worn out. I like to say broke, busted, and disgusted. All you who are weary and heavy laden, we just talked about that. Sometimes the things that we are going through, sometimes the things that we carry, they feel heavy. They feel like a burden. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is Jesus talking to these younger believers. He's not saying that someone else is going to give them rest. He's saying, come to me. Come to me and I will be the one that gives you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We talked about the yoke this morning. Remember, the yoke is a piece of farming equipment. That's that thing that goes around the animal's neck. And it's not, it's not normally just a one-person thing. It's, it's, it's a two-animal kind of thing where it goes around the animal's neck and there's a large piece of wood that goes out and you connect the two animals together. And those beasts are plowing the field. Those beasts are working together to accomplish a work. Jesus is inviting us into his yoke. And let me be straight with you. I'll come into a yoke with Jesus any day. Why? Because he's bigger than I am. Because he's stronger than I am. It doesn't mean by still being a part of that yoke that I'm not maybe going to feel a little bit of pressure. That I'm not maybe going to feel a little bit of the heaviness that comes. Even when we go to the Lord in prayer, we can't expect things to just poof, be gone. It doesn't happen that way. But when we come into the yoke with him, we're coming into agreement with him. We're coming into agreement with his will for our life. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, Jesus is talking to us, take my yoke upon you. He's going to help us carry that burden and learn of me. You don't have to turn to books. You don't have to turn to self-help. You don't have to turn to anyone. Just turn to him. He says, learn of me. He's teaching us how to endure these troubles, endure these trials, get through these things that we're going through. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I'm kind. I'm passionate about you, about taking care of you. I care for you. I want to help you with those burdens for I am meek and lowly in heart and it's there that you'll find rest for your soul. We have to learn to come into the yoke with him, allow him to help us get through the situation as he's leading us and guiding us. And that's another thing about that yoke. Wherever one goes, the other one has to go. Well, because he's stronger, we should be following his yoke. Why would we pull against the Lord when the Lord knows the best way to get through the situation? I am meek and lowly in heart, and it's there you'll find rest for your soul. 
How many of you need rest? Man, I need rest. Sometimes it gets too heavy. But he wants you to come to him for rest because he says, my yoke is easy. My yoke is going to be easier for you than anybody else because I'm going to do most of the heavy lifting. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is Jesus talking to us. What are we waiting for? Why are we carrying things that we don't have to carry? Why are we allowing things to weigh us down and pressure us down and we get so used to carrying it that we forget to let it go? Why do we do that? We get so used to carrying those burdens and we don't know that we have been carrying that weight and carrying that burden until it is finally lifted. And then you're like, oh, when my cat moved, I could breathe better. It wasn't as hard. It wasn't as labored because I didn't have that five to 10 pounds sitting on my chest. Why walk around carrying things that we don't have to carry? We went through a list of things this morning that we can consider as baggage. I wonder, do you have other things that you need to add to the list? Maybe things that I forgot. Who knows? Let's spend some time together. Let's talk about those burdens, but let's specifically talk about giving those burdens to the Lord, coming into a yoke with him, coming into agreement with him. Not trying to do this on our own. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We're the ones who walk away. We're the ones who uh, act like we never had anyone that we could rely on or lean on. What are we waiting on? Let's get help from the Lord. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful time. And normally I remind you to thank your home group pastors, and you can still do that. But home group pastors, let me say a public thank you to all of you for what you do. I sure do love you. I sure do appreciate your hard work. I sure do appreciate um, what you do to help me carry the burden, and I don't say burden in a bad way, but to carry the burden of our church. As we continue to grow, we're going to need others to step up, others to become home group pastors, others to become servant leaders in other ways. We love you, but we're going to need your help. So think about it. We have a few months left of this season. Well, going into next season is maybe the Lord pricking your heart. I'm not talking about the home group pastors that are already actively involved. I'm talking about maybe some of you others. Is the Lord prompting your heart to maybe get to work, to maybe help me carry some of this burden, help me and Jesus carry some of this burden? I sure do love y'all. I hope you have a great time, and I will see you all soon. God bless you.